so the severed head is now talking to him. If you want to collab, we have to discuss your terms. I need to know how you kill a god. I'm emotionally fucked. Nothing really could have prepared me for how this book ended. Welcome to another reading vlog. So this vlog, I think I'm gonna be centered on getting through my library holds because they're all due in about five days. So that's a problem because I have not finished a single one of them yet. So I have started The Bladed Faith by David Dalgleish. I am about 100 pages into this. This is following our main character, Cyrus. Cyrus, yes. And he was a prince of this kingdom. His kingdom gets usurped by these like revolutionaries who have their own kind of religion, own kind of justice system, not very good and very oppressive. And they come in and basically kill all of the royal family except Cyrus and also the families and kingdoms gods. I gotta be honest, I'm really not enjoying the writing style of this book and I feel like it's taking away a lot of the potential of the book. I don't love when we open up a book on the like big turning point of a character because I don't know these characters. I don't know anybody. I don't have any attachment to them. So I can't really feel anything when Cyrus's like family and his entire kingdom is just like taken away from him. I just don't have any stakes in the character. And that is such like a core reasoning as to why Cyrus is now wanting to get revenge and vengeance over his kingdom. So I'm already not really starting off on a good foot with this. And also this book is very character driven and I am just not a character driven reader in the slightest. It takes some really, really amazing writing to make me solely care about characters and not like plot or anything like that. And in addition to that, man, I feel like I'm just shitting on this book, but I also just feel like it's a little too fast paced. Like things are happening way too quickly. We're at the 100 page mark and he's getting like his weapons to be an assassin and all of these things and I get that he was a prince before so he clearly does have some like weapons training but I just think that it's like happening way too quickly like I'm like I don't know if you already have the skills for this small amount of time that you've been with these people I, I just don't buy it and also the whole gods thing I'm not really understanding because it seems like they are these like really powerful beings, but these revolutionaries were able to just come in and murder them. And it's not really explained how they were able to do that to gods. I need to know how you kill a god. And we're not told how they do that, but then I'm supposed to believe that these gods have like immense power and they're able to give power to other people and do amazing things but then they could just be killed by humans i just i'm not really grasping what's going on in like the world building and i just think the author needs to take a breather and like explain things a little bit more before trying to like get to the climax of the story i feel like we need a little more foreplay for lack of a better word. The only thing that's really keeping me going is the gods. Even though I don't really understand their purpose or their powers or why they're there or why they're not there. If you got gods in your book, I'm gonna hold on a little bit more, but I only have two more days with the audiobook for this book. So if I don't finish it by then, this is gonna be a DNF. Okay, anyways, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh, she dared, well. Um, I think that's, can I at least get in frame, please? Can I, can I, can I at least? I think that'll be it for me guys, for this clip. Uh, I'll check back in when I have more things to say. <laughs> Hi 
am about 30% into the bones of ruin and this is really good you guys I haven't been immediately hooked on a book in a long time especially a YA like I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys a lot of times when I start books I don't feel comfortable talking to you guys about them until at least like 40 percent ma'am can you just come here filming with my cat has been such a journey i I don't, I don't know what to do with her it might just be a me thing but i hate when i start a book and then i don't end up really liking it and then i don't really have any opinions about it and it ends up just being like a three or two star read it's like you don't want to see that and i don't want to see that like i would rather just save those kinds of books for wrap-ups just so i can get out of the way but during a reading vlog like you want to have like a good time i feel like that's what i feel in my heart so i'm really enjoying this great news for everybody involved this is about iris and we follow her as she is a tight roper in this circus and we find out that she has this unique ability you could say of uh not dying so if she has an accident if she's killed if she's literally shot in the head she comes right back kicking that's what i call resiliency and another thing is that she does not remember her past. And usually I really am not a fan of the whole amnesia trope as I even discussed about with City We Became. It's in a lot of other books do it where the past is a mystery to the person who has it. It's just, you know, it's just not my favorite trope. But in here, I don't really mind it. Probably because I feel like this is a very fast paced story, like we're moving very quickly and I'm very intrigued. So it's keeping me engaged in other ways that I'm not so much annoyed by the whole amnesia trope thing. Another thing is that there's multiple people in Iris's life who she has met who do know who she is, but for some reason they're like not telling her, which could be a little frustrating like in a reader and Iris's standpoint, but their reasoning is that they like want her to like remember herself and again it's just not really bothering me i don't know why but it's really really entertaining this is definitely giving me gilded wolves vibes just based on like the setting and following people of color in this victorian london like very you know white setting so there's definitely similar discussions that both of those books have in common but also it's giving me x-men vibes too because there was this explosion apparently during this exhibit we still don't know entirely the details about it but after this explosion a lot of people got powers including iris and the people that she has around her i'm loving that in an unrelated note i went to target and i want to show you guys one of my holy grail products if you are a girly who suffers from oily hair and just flat hair like obviously mine right now you need this dry shampoo it is the collab dry shampoo plus extra volume one i have tried a lot of dry shampoo in my day and i know the tiktok girlies are trying to cancel dry shampoo because it apparently makes your hair fall out i don't care because as long as i have hair it is not gonna look oily and flat bitch it's just not i'm gonna put it in my hair right now I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all right now. Obviously, it's gonna have a white cast right now, but I just choose these in. And like, this is the only dry shampoo that has actually like given me volume in my hair. Just watch. Just watch, guys. In the moment. Okay. Slight white cast, but I also haven't really found a dry shampoo that works and doesn't leave a white cast. And look at that. Like, do you guys not see a difference? Like, I, like just in those couple spritzes, look at how voluminous my hair looks now. And it, like, actually feels good. Ugh, immediately, immediate difference. Also, if you are a pasty bitch like me, this lotion, this lotion right here. Since moving to Seattle, man, I have gotten so pasty, like, so, so so pale that is just the one thing about living in this like gloomy city that i have just not enjoyed this has helped immensely it does not 
make like a really drastic drastic difference like it's not like a self tanner but using this every day and it smells good and it's like very moisturizing after about three days it definitely does make a difference and I really really like the result of it it just adds just a teensy teensy little bit more color into my skin and it's life-changing it's life-changing so those are my two little body hair care things that I really like all the other stuff I got was freaking fabuloso and sponges and shit so not very exciting for anybody so on a total unrelated note I just finished uh season three of we're here and um yeah I I enjoyed it I, you know, it, it was really cute. I didn't get emotional at all. If the show's fine, it's like, okay. If you, if you like want to watch it, sure, you can. I, I don't know. I would give it like, eh, like a seven out of 10. Yeah, no, I'm emotionally fucked. I'm going to go wash my makeup off now. So, uh, great. All right, y'all, so I am almost done with Bones of Ruin. I am about 80% into this book, and I'm still really enjoying it. The only thing is that I totally didn't realize that this book dealt with a, like, tournament, which I know is a very, very popular trope that a lot of people like. I am not necessarily one of those people. It's not something that gets me super excited or invested in a story. I think... It has to be done in a very particular way for me to really enjoy it. And I don't really understand the points of the tournament in the story because it seemed like we were going in a different route. And I'm not really sure as we're going to the resolution and we're having some things revealed. I'm, I, I really don't know if the tournament tournament was necessary. I just don't really understand the point of it besides filling space in the middle of this book and like introducing us to other people with like different powers and things. It's definitely not a boring way to fill space, but it still feels like it's just filling space regardless. I don't know. I still am really enjoying the book and I still really liked it. Uh, it is taking me a little bit longer than I would like to finish it, but I'm intrigued to see how it's gonna go and how this is gonna end. Okay. Uh, wow. Um, I, I just finished her. I haven't felt like the burning desire and quite frankly need to update you guys immediately after finishing a book in I don't know how long. The way that this book ended, wild. Like this shit got weird. Nothing really could have prepared me for how this book ended. We definitely did get hints of something alluding to the ending, but like I couldn't have told you that this is how. Oh gosh, I just, I wish I could talk about it more, but I don't want to spoil anything because I really, really want the fantasy girlies to get their hands on this book. I really do think that a lot of people would really, really like this book. I mean, it has the whole tournament competition thing going for it. It had like that X-Men factor that I told you guys about. It definitely has that like Gilded Wolves aspect to it because there's kind of this artifact kind of thing that they end up looking for. There's like this mysterious past component. There's also definitely a like love triangle thing going on even though kind of it's a square because there's like three guys that are kind of into Iris. I didn't really care about that, but um, it was definitely there. And it wasn't so egregious that it like annoyed me. It was just like, I was invested on like the plot of this boy. Oh my gosh, this, wow. I am so genuinely shocked about this book. I think I'm gonna rate it at a four for now, but I could definitely see this like getting bumped up for me. I am just so shocked at how this book ended and also just how good this book is because the only person that I have heard read and talk about this book is 
Kayla from Books on Lala. I need the girlies to wake up. Y'all are sleeping on her. This was good. Was it long? Yes. Did it take me a little longer than I would have liked to finish this book? especially granted that I was like reading it on audio for most of it. Yes. Are there tropes in here that are not necessarily for me and perfect for me? Also yes. But in a general like appealing way, I feel like this book would be great for a lot of people. And again, that ending. God, I haven't read a book, especially a YA fantasy with an ending that is like boom, impactful. This would be a book that I would have just stayed up until like 4 a.m. to finish. I wish I could talk a little bit more about why I really loved it, loved it because of the like reveal and everything, but I just, I really don't want to give away really anything because I think that a lot of my enjoyment was knowing nothing. Even despite the annoying factor of a lot of people in Iris's life knowing knowing who she was, it makes sense why they didn't tell her because I was starting to get frustrated with that factor towards the end of the book, but when we find out who she really is, yeah, ignorance, ignorance is definitely bliss. You can definitely say that. I'm telling you, you need to pick this book up because wow, it, it, it was such an unexpected surprise. I'm so happy right now. I haven't enjoyed like a YA fantasy, especially in, God, so long. I got a coffee table. Let's build it. Are you freaking kidding me? Guys, look at how cute this coffee table is. Oh my gosh. I am obsessed. I got it off Amazon. I will link it in the description below. Guys, oh my gosh, I'm so obsessed. All right, y'all, so today is very exciting because I am starting my volunteer work at the library today. I am going to be working at like the gift shop instead of the main library for now, but I'm really excited. I don't know what I will be doing, but we're gonna find out together. I'm just like, I'm so excited to at least like be in the library and the Seattle Central Library is an incredible building like it is humongous the architecture is crazy i'm really excited to be able to go there weekly um and just be immersed in the environment I'm back. Today went very well. We just went over like standard like training stuff and I did rearrange the LGBTQ shelf because of course I did. On that note, I did have a woman call me the F slur. So, you know, all in all, it was a great successful day. Reading update wise, I am 60% into The City We Became and uh, I wish I had more thoughts on this book, but I'm really kind of coasting with this story right now. I'm not gonna lie. I am not invested really in any of the characters or the plot. The only thing really keeping me is just N.K. Jemisin's writing just in general because it is just so enjoyable and so digestible. But I, I gotta be honest, I'm really not caring for this story. I don't know if there's anything really in particular that isn't grabbing me. I'm just waiting for kind of the characters to all come together and for them to defeat this like antagonist that is trying to destroy them. I'm kind of like in the feeling of like, okay, let's get to the point. I hate to be that bitch, but I feel like this would have been a lot cooler as like a no 
Bella. I would have liked this concept of cities being personified in like small little novellas and like a series and being able to see a bunch of different cities because we do get introduced to at least like one other city in this book and I love the concept and the idea of this story. I'm just not really gripped in it but yeah I am exhausted if you can't tell so I'm going to put on my PJs and watch some TV and just decompress. Is this a cute angle? Probably not, but we work with what we have. So I did finish The City We Became. This is a three star read for me. I think this would be really good for the right reader, but I am unfortunately not that reader. It's not slow by any means because there's a lot of action in this. In fact, maybe even a little too much action for my taste, but I do think that it was like very long and it dragged out a lot and it was a little too like surrealist for me, a little too weird. I wasn't able to latch onto any of the characters and ultimately I also just do think that I missed a lot by not knowing a whole bunch about New York. I think this is definitely a gift to the people of New York and people that know that city and love that city and I do not. I am a West Coast girly through and through. I feel like I lost a lot of the nuances and a lot of like the Easter eggs and inside jokes and everything about this book, but it is still N.K. Jemisin and I still really love the concept of this book. I love what she did with this book. It's just, was it written for me and that's okay i also did you guys know that i was reading her little biography did you know that she is the first author in history to win three consecutive hugo awards for best novel i didn't know that i knew that she had won a bunch of hugo awards but i didn't know that she was the first author to do that so happy black history month we love to see it i also started fate of the fallen by kel Cade, and let me guys this this is so juvenile. It's like bad. I know this is gonna come off as an insult and it, it kind of is, but this feels like I should be able to read this for free on Kindle Unlimited. I know there are really great and amazing authors on that service, but there are also, you know, a lot of other ones. This is feeling like a really good fantasy that you would read on Kindle Unlimited. Do with that what you will. This is following the best friend of like the prophesized hero and the prophesized hero ends up dying. So he is going to, you know, take over the quest and hopefully fulfill the prophecy. I am going to spoil something, but it is very like, it's, it's at the very beginning of the book. But if you're sensitive to spoilers, I don't know, mute this part. The hero's motherly figure, his like mentor, whatever you want to call her, she's like a sorceress. She literally tells the guy, Guy, um, a, how do you say his name? Aslo? She tells Aslo that he needs to go to the king and like let the king know that Matthias the hero is dead and the way that she told him to do that was that he needs to cut off his head and bring it to the king. He needs to cut off his best friend's head and it was just so unserious. I could not believe that that was happening and it was just so nonchalant. And now I'm looking at the cover and he has a sack. That's his head. I feel crazy reading this and like having a more visceral reaction than this man. Oh, the characterization is just rough, guys. And like the world building is rough. Like it's just, it's again, it's very juvenile. The seeds of something are there, but it's just like, there is no depth. It's very surface level. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not holding out hope that this is gonna be a favorite, y'all. Today I'm celebrating one of my best friend's birthday and we are going to the Museum of Pop Culture. So that is going to be fun. I don't know how much of that I will film, but maybe I'll include a couple clips of that here. <laughs> Uh, 
I am about 50% into Fate of the Fallen. So the severed head is now talking to him. That was something uh, that I couldn't have predicted. This book just keeps getting more ridiculous as I go on. This is quite frankly a car crash that I can't look away from. This book is so ridiculous in fact that it has me complimenting Sarah J Mass. Let me further elaborate on that fact. So we all know that the best friend dies, right? That's like the synopsis of the book. And I don't think there would be a way to not spoil that fact because that's basically the whole reason that you're picking this book up. It is for the pitch of, you know, Sam taking on the ring if Frodo died, you know, like that's the whole reason that we're reading this book, right? But I just wish that it couldn't be that way. I just kind of wish that Kel Kade took a little masterclass from Sarah J Mass because one thing that that woman did in Crescent City was she was able to really build the relationship between those two characters. And if you know, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, delve too much into that in case people actually care about that book. She was able to like develop that relationship where once that tragedy happened, you did care. There was no building of the relationship between Matthias and Aslo. Like there was nothing. We're led to believe that these two are like brothers in arms, but we're just told that and I wish we were able to see it. And now this head is talking to him. The head of his supposed best friend, who he had to chop off himself, is now talking to him and providing comic relief for the story. It is so, so, so ridiculous. And also the other point of view character is Magdalene, which is like this high sorceress of the realm. And she has this really annoying thing where she is both really overpowered, but also couldn't save the hero of this story because she wasn't even there. It was like such a stupid reason why she wasn't there to like save him. That is like really a standout of poor writing for me when you have characters like doing super, super high powerful things, but also conveniently can't save people or can't do things because it would hinder the plot. That's a marker of bad writing for me. I can't believe I'm even like still finishing this book but I might as well continue on to see the car crash all the way through. I'm doing this for you guys, doing this so you don't have to. I am nothing if not a good Samaritan. All right, y'all, I finished it. If you're wondering how it ended, he ends up dying and then he gets brought back by his little sorcery friend who is also in love with a god, question mark. But he comes back part dragon and he ends up going to another realm, meets a dragon lady, dragon god, dragon lady, gets her power, lend it to him, and because of getting the power of a dragon lady god, he ends up uh, getting the ability to uh, raise the dead. if I need to say anything more about that story. I'm just gonna let what went on in that book speak for itself. That's a one star. That's the end of this video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I read three books. Oh, and then I did end up DNFing The Bladed Faith, if that wasn't apparent. I know I never officially told y'all, but yeah, that was, that, that was pretty obviously gonna be a DNF for me. Found a new favorite YA fantasy, so that's a win. Overall, I think it was a pretty entertaining vlog, if I do say so myself. That's pretty much it. Panda and I are signing off. Can I get a, can I get something from the studio audience? Actions speak louder than words. That's right. Queen. All right, I'm leaving. Um, hope y'all have a great day, uh, whenever you watch this.